Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Aligning Business and IT Objectives to Achieve a Successful Cloud GIS Implementation. Before we begin, the session will be about 45 minutes and we'll be sending out the recording afterwards. Time permitting, we will be having a question and answer session at the end. There's a question panel on your right, so please feel free to type and submit your questions at any time throughout the webinar. We'd also be grateful at the end if you could complete our short survey that will pop up. This will help us with future webinars. And finally, just to let you know, you're in listen-only mode, so we can't hear you. To introduce ourselves today, my name is Demelza Potter. I work in the business development team here at CADCorp, and I predominantly work with our public sector uh, customers, helping them make the most of their GIS investment. My co-presenter is Simon. Um, over to you, Simon. Thank you, Demelza. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Simon Parker. I'm pre-sales team leader at CADCorp. Uh, and later on this morning, I'll be demonstrating what a successful uh, GIS cloud implementation looks like. So that's exploring both uh, software and data. Thanks, Simon. And we're just going to switch our cameras off um, just to um, enable smooth uh, running of today to increase the um, bandwidth and we'll get started. Um, so the agenda for today, for those of you who are not familiar with CACOP um, and what we do, um, I'll tell you a bit about us. Um, I can see from those of you who have joined us today, most of you are in the public sector, so I've taken this sector to look at IT and GIS service provision, followed by highlighting some of the benefits and requirements for any cloud-based GIS. Then I'll be passing over to Simon to provide a demonstration to see how these requirements can be met in practice. I'll highlight some projects that we've been working on and sum up with some key takeaways at the end. And finally, we'll be taking your questions. So to be a little bit interactive to begin with, we're going to start with a poll and ask you a couple of questions. So I launch this one. Does your organization already use GIS software and or services from the cloud? Yes, no, or unsure? I'll just give you a couple of seconds just to answer that for us. Great, so about 80% yes, 15% no. So a lot of you already, um, your organizations using um, some or many even uh, services from the cloud. And if I close this one and just ask you the second question, is your organization, or is your organization planning to migrate to the cloud, um, your GIS to the cloud in the next 12 months? Again, Yes, no, unsure. And again, I'll just give you a few seconds just to complete that. So about 60% or so of you, yes. 25% um, of you, um, unsure. I'd imagine most of you are here to, to find out a little bit more so, and hopefully we'll give you um, that background uh, information that you're, you're looking for. Right, let's close that one and carry on. So I said I'd start with a bit of us about us at CADCorp. Um, we're UK-based and focused on the development and delivery of our product CADCorp SIS, which includes web, mobile, and desktop GIS applications. We work across these um, various sectors on screen um, and more. CACOP SIS, or Spatial Information System, as we call it, is our suite of GIS products covering web, mobile, and desktop. These can be cloud hosted and managed or indeed installed locally if that's preferable. Um, WebMap and mobile provide interactive and dynamic access to geospatial data and desktop provides more advanced um, GIS capabilities. C 
So moving on to the topic of today's webinar, aligning business and IT objectives to provide a successful cloud implementation. Well, I thought I'd take a look at where we are generally today and how much our workplaces have changed. Um, most of you are now working from home. Um, alongside this, we have more demand for services um, and a need to provide higher levels of services um, to your customers or residents or users, whoever that may be. And this is likely to remain within the constraints of ongoing budget restrictions. Now I've taken um, local government finance examples of budget restrictions. Um, and this graph shows local authority spending power. That is the amount of money local authorities have to spend from government grants, council tax, business rates. So this graph has ba is basically showing spending power has fallen by 16% since 2010. Alongside this, um, in the last two years during the COVID pandemic, this graph shows local authorities have lost income and spent more as, as a result of higher cost and increased demand for services, the total COVID burden lying at nearly um, £12 billion. So in light of this, we want to look at how GIS um, can help and how cloud GIS um, can help in, with these uh, tightened budget restrictions. Um, in GIS, we want to capture data, share data, but ultimately deliver services. And so understanding and implementing a GIS in line with your business and ID, IT objectives is particularly important. By collaborating with colleagues, you can achieve a successful cloud um, GIS implementation. Um, in general, both IT and GIS improve and drive service provision. They have fundamental roles in improving efficiency and therefore reducing costs, underpinning organizational chains and, and cross organizational working. They enable self-service digital delivery, a flexible and mobile workforce, and they enable agility in terms of dealing what's new and what's next demanded by the customer. Um, I thought I'd highlight some specific benefits of a CACOP cloud service. So this includes um, hardware and software upgrades as well as uh, map updates. So it takes a, an amount of um, administration time away. Um, we interface with other cloud environments, um, on-site systems and databases. Server administration and monitoring is delivered um, by CACOP. However, there is access to further CACOP managed services and technical support services as well. There is also CACOP full product management and product administration available. So that's, for example, if you have no GIS administration um, capabilities or, or resource in-house. And there are also a number of resilience backup and disaster recovery options available. So various benefits available. If we take a look more generally, today across the public sector, cloud technologies are top of the list in any IT strategy. And when I discuss with customers and read tenders, the requirements are to keep this um, uh, cloud GIS, keep it simple, that is really key. Keep it intuitive for all users, keep it consistent. Each service should be presented and accessed in similar ways. Keep it accessible, so device independent. Keep it personalized, um, a personalized experience for users. Keep it minimum administration. And for us, this means utilizing APIs such that um, platform uh, and software integration um, is easy and integration with other cloud environments and on-site systems such that we have uh, real-time data is available and where that's not possible, we have automated processes. Also managed services, mentioned this on um, my, my 
uh, previous slide where you might want to utilize a fully managed service so it's a completely hands-off um, approach or a part managed service where um, your yourself or colleagues can can take a role in administrating the service so i'm going to pass over to um, simon now with those um, requirements in mind There we go, over to you, Simon, to show us a little bit more um, about what we've just been talking about. Thank you, Demelza. Good morning to you all again. So I'll just share my screen and then make a start on my demonstration. Okay, so yep, this morning I'm going to show you <clears throat> what a successful uh, GIS cloud uh, implementation uh, looks like, and that includes both software <clears throat> and data in the cloud. So let's start off with um, desktop GIS, and as it as its name suggests, you know this is traditionally an application uh, you uh, install locally on your machine, and in general terms, it's a go-to software for uh, GIS administrators or analysts to create uh, and update data or perform a variety of um, different sort of spatial analysis, which may include um, in these examples here creating uh, thematic maps for both uh, points. Uh, and uh, polygon data, um, could be performing hotspot analysis to look at concentrations of data, um, <clears throat> or as a final example, performing sort of routing analysis. And this particular example here shows um, <clears throat> travel uh, isochromes from a, from a single location, just to show you know, how far you can travel over a network within um, specific uh, time periods. But it's also the desktop GIS where you also prepare um, your maps for publishing to a Magius web mapping solution. I'll also introduce to you the CAD Corpsys um, web map application shortly. But more and more organizations are seeing the benefit of um, <clears throat> implementing these GIS applications in the cloud. Uh, and the traditional sort of desktop GIS, which I sort of touched upon here, can also be accessed in the cloud all from within um, a web browser. So I'm just going to minimize my desktop GIS and I'm going to open up uh, my Microsoft Edge browser. And this is CAD Corpsys desktop in the cloud. So yep, accessed um, in a browser. Um, and I'm just going to enable full screen here. Now we, what we do is we give you a, a login to be able to access the, the software. <clears throat> and once you're in, you get the same software and functionality as if it were installed um, locally on the machine. So as an example, in this sort of home tab here, <clears throat> you can add a variety of different data formats. You can style data. You can create themes and you can also perform queries on data. Um, you've got a create tab here where you can use this to create and update data. You've also got access to analysis tools where you can you know, create buffers and also create um, hotspot maps. And if I go to the applications tab, <clears throat> we also um, pre-install um, add-ins as well for use within this environment. And here I've got basically a mixture of some of our free add-ins and some of our uh, licensed add-ins as well. Now regarding um, your data, um, you, you can generally split this you know, into two separate camps. So the first one is your background mapping, and then your second is your um, organization data. The ordnance survey mapping is generally the go-to mapping, background mapping in the UK. Um, and with the OS Data, data Hub API, um, you no longer need to store your own versions of um, OS data products, you can simply connect directly to the API and consume it um, within the software. And within this desktop, um, we've added some really easy to use wizards to be able to connect to the OS data hub. So I'm going to go to our so add overlay wizard. And we have our, sort of jet, our, our tab here for connecting to a variety of different ordnance survey data. We've got the OS um, data hub option here. And this allows you to access one of the free APIs that are available. So that's the features, uh, maps, and vector tile. Now we do provide um, sort of a built-in API key and um, within the software, so you can get immediate access to, to the data hub, um, but that will only give you access to the open data plan. However, if you're part of the PSGA, you can obtain a, an API key from the OS, and that will also give you access to the premium data as well. So I'm going to give a quick example of adding um, some data from the OS Maps um, API. <clears throat> they give you loads of different um, style options. Um, I'm going to choose the outdoor style 
hit finish <coughs> and very easily <coughs> excuse me, I've connected um, to the data. We can see it's sort of listed there on the left hand side. Um, so yeah, really easy to connect to the data. You know, it's going to save you a lot of time not having to download and manage your own versions of the data um, in the cloud. Now for your own um, organizational data, <coughs> a cloud implementation will likely include a cloud hosted database where you can kind of store and manage your own uh, business data. And there are several options available for migrating your data into the cloud. And we can you know, speak to these in more detail with you um, outside of the webinar today. <coughs> and there are options where you know, we can host these databases for you, um, or you can host the databases yourself within your own uh, cloud infrastructure. But either way, uh, the desktop GIS software in the cloud can still connect to these databases in the same way you may connect to a, a local database. So just as an example, if we go back to my Add Overlay wizard, I'm going to connect to my cloud hosted database. So in this instance, I'm using uh, PostGIS to um, connect to my database. Um, and I'm going to load in uh, some crime data in this example. So I'm going to choose that data set. Um, and then before I load it in, I just want to give it a, a name. So I'll just call this um, crime incidents, <clears throat> hit finish. And on the left hand side, we can see the crime data has been added into my project. And now that I've added it in, let's just um, apply some styling to the data. And I want to style it based on the different types of crime. So we're going to use our add theme wizard um, against the crime data. Loads of options to choose from. Today I'm going to use a, an individual value theme. Select the column which tells me the type of a uh, crime. It goes and gets all the unique values. Um, and then from here, I can choose how I want to style each of those different crime types. So I'm going to access um, our color palette um, and just choose a set of colors to apply to each of those uh, crime types. And then just select a symbol. So maybe I'll just choose a, a circle symbol today. And then we can access a legend. Look at that. We can modify it. Perhaps I want to change um, the title for my legend. I also just want to display perhaps a circle in my legend as well. So I can modify those settings. And then once I'm happy, make those changes, hit finish, <clears throat> and my data is now styled. So yeah, really easy still to you know to connect um, to a, to a database. This one in particular is in the cloud. I've added some data and I've also styled it just as though, or just as if the, the, the software um, would be installed locally. So to summarise, accessing desktop GIS in the cloud for a browser does give you that uh, more accessibility. Um, it doesn't really matter to what matter where you work as long as you've got a, an internet connection. CADCorp also updates the software when new versions are released, so you no longer have to make that request to your own IT team and, and wait for them to kind of update the software on your own hardware. And the feedback we've received uh, from our customers has been really positive, and we've been told that performance is actually better in the cloud than on their um, local machines. And that's you know just because of local factors, really, where maybe they have low specification hardware. And perhaps the, the sort of local network uh, performance is also slow. So that is CADCorp's desktop in the cloud. Now, alongside um, the desktop software, web mapping is also another powerful tool um, that can be deployed in your GIS cloud environment. And it's powerful because it just um, allows you to open up the sharing of your GIS data to a wider audience. But also in terms of investment, you can you know, buy the application once and you can deploy it multiple times. So this is a web map, yep, access in a browser, um, and it's been it's been designed so it's you know, really easy to use and you don't really require any formal training uh, to use it. And I've designed this particular version of the app um, for internal use. So all of my colleagues inside of my organization can access mapping data and you can just see in the URL there, I've sort of branded this as my um, internal app. Now in the top right hand corner of the interface, um, you can see there are several buttons um, available. Um, and then from the main menu in the top left hand corner, um, I've also given access to several features that my colleagues uh, can utilize. But if I go to um, map features, I can see um, a list of all of the, the data layers that are available um, in this map. And I've specifically uh, designed this map uh, for my planning colleagues. So I'm just going to uh, zoom into the map to location of interest. Um, perhaps I'm interested in viewing listed buildings and we can now sort of visually see where they are on the map. I can also drill down on the data. So here if I click on um, this particular listed building, I can see all the sort of the, the, the textual data 
um, alongside my listed buildings information here. And this particular data set is actually an open data set and it provides a, a nice little hyperlink that you can utilize. And it just, by hitting that hyperlink, takes you to the, um, the, the specific record on the, in this example, the Historic England website, where I can actually access more details for that particular um, listed building. But also available from this main menu in the top left-hand corner um, is a search by area capability, which provides you know, really sort of user-friendly analysis tools at your fingertips. So it's a different type of um, interrogation. I'm going to search for listed buildings within, within an area of interest. And I'm going to defi define that area by drawing it on the map. Um, and then um, once drawn, um, the search finds all of the listed buildings that fall within that area and then presents the results to me in this table view on the left hand side. So I can see all the details. I can also choose to download the results of that search to um, a CSV file as well. So I can actually um, use the results of that search externally from the um, web map application. So that search by area there, which is a yeah, really powerful tool for enabling your colleagues to access GIS data, but also sort of self-serve and analyze data for, for an area of interest. Now, because I have um, designed this particular app here as an internal um, version, if I hit this little close button in the top right hand corner, I've actually published several maps within this application and each map um, is designed for a specific department within my organization. And each map contains data that is relevant to their own um, business areas. Now you could even make this view that you see here as your initial sort of landing page when you access the app. So it gives my colleagues an opportunity to um, select a map that they want to um, view in this session. And it's also worth noting, you can also utilize Azure Active Directory as well, since it's hosted in the cloud environment. Um, and you can use that to yeah, manage access to the application and also you can manage access to specific maps as well. And if I choose to access one of these maps, maybe I want to look at uh, my um, elections map. I've now launched that map. And if I go up to uh, my map features, and um, we can see we've got a different um, list of data layers that I can view for this specific map. So that is just you know, one example here of a deploying web map designed for use um, uh, inside my organization. But if you do have a requirement to provide mapping for public access as well, the same application can be deployed again, um, but it can, be in it can be tailored for that um, intended audience. So this time I'm gonna close uh, Microsoft Edge and I'm going to access web map using my Google Chrome browser because it doesn't really matter um, which browser you use. Now this version of web map is being designed for public access. So if I um, point you in the top right hand corner, um, you can see I've disabled some options because there are now only two options available um, in this app. And then if I go to the uh, main menu in the top left hand corner, you might remember my internal version had loads of options available from this drop down. But here for this public facing map, I've only enabled um, two features. And if I access uh, map features, in this particular example, I've collated data from different business areas. So here I've got sort of data from planning and education, for example, and I've just made them all available in a single map um, for the public to access. And that means the public you know, can self-serve and, and view data uh, for where they live. Now, right at the top, I'm going to uh, search uh, for my location where I live, and I'm going to do that by typing in a postcode, select the result um, from the list, but instead of you know, turning data layers on and off just to get some information about where I live, this time I'm gonna run the uh, local knowledge web service for web map. And this service basically takes my current location, queries some of my key sort of business uh, data sets, and then presents the results of those queries to me as a visitor in a really sort of concise way um, on the left-hand side. So examples um, I've set up here include you know, where, what ward am I in? Who is my counselor? Always forgetting when you sort of which bins are due for collection. So here I'm pulling through information about where my bins are due for collection and which bins they are. You can also perform like a find my nearest type search. So this one is telling me my nearest three um, electrical charging points for vehicles. I can select a result and the, the map will take me to that location. We get a nice little pop up there, which gives me some additional information there. We can do sort of statistical type query. So this example <clears throat> for my location within a two kilometer radius, you know, how many planning applications have been uh, submitted recently. And then the final example, another find my nearest type example here, uh, but this time we're 
um, finding all public toilets within a two kilometer um, radius. So those are just sort of a couple of examples um, of how you can make uh, accessing data really easily. And, you know, it's just a nice way of, you know, presenting that local information uh, to encourage that, that self-service. So I've shown you sort of two different examples of how you can deploy a web map. Now the application itself is managed in a separate interface where the administrator can sort of log into the manager and that is also accessed in a browser. And this is where you can, you know, personalize the application by adding maps and also defining what functionality um, is available. So just as a quick example, let's customize that last sort of public map that I just showed you. So I'm gonna to go to the settings for that particular map. And maybe I actually want to enable some extra features or functionality um, for that map. So it's just a nice little tick box exercise. So I'm going to enable um, the audience to, or the, yeah, the audience to sort of uh, search by area. They can do some measuring and they can also do some drawing as well. And I'll just hit this update option to make those changes. Now, if I go back to that public map, and just as a reminder, top left-hand corner, we only had sort of the two features available initially. If I just sort of refresh this session, just to take into account those changes I've just made, in the top left-hand corner, I can now see those new options um, that I've just um, added. So you're really easy to you know, manage and, and personalize the app. And again, all from a browser, which just makes it really um, accessible. So just to summarize there, so web mapping is a great addition to a cloud-hosted uh, GIS solution. You know, it enables you to make GIS uh, data accessible to a wide audience. It's easy to use and manage. You can deploy as many times as you, as you like, and, and that's really good for uh, you know, writing your business cases because it means you're getting that greater return um, on your investment. And then just to finish off, just like the desktop software, CADCorp can you know, maintain the software and upgrades on your behalf. But beyond sort of the web map interface that I've been demonstrating to you, you can also take the same maps um, that I've showed you um, and you can embed them across your organization's um, website. And this capability comes um, with web map um, as standard functionality. And it just provides that flexibility to, to drop an embedded map on a web page um, on your website where it's appropriate to maybe display a map alongside um, other information. So this particular example here is just showing locations of pharmacies, but um, some of our customers use it to display locations of car parks. We also have a blue light organization who use it to display sort of recent 999 incidents um, they've attended in the past 24 hours. And these are just sort of embedded maps that they've made available um, on their sort of public facing uh, websites. So yet you still get this extra capability from web map, um, even in a cloud um, environment. And then just to sort of uh, finish off my demonstration this morning, um, you can also take these maps from web map and display them uh, within Microsoft Power BI using the CAD Corp um, visual. And yet yeah, we're seeing that more and more organizations are benefiting from um, uh, using Microsoft Power BI for sort of BI or business intelligence. And you know, it just makes sense that you're able to, to view the data you're reporting on um, in a map. So it just, it just gives you that sort of geographical perspective to the data. And this particular sort of example report here is showing uh, locations of fly tipping incidents. On the um, map itself, I can hover over uh, an incident shown as these pins, um, and I can see some specific information um, about that particular um, uh, incident. We've also got a nice little layer switcher here. So this example allows me to switch between the different sort of um, base map layers from the OS Maps API. So yep, that can all feed through into um, the Power BI. And I've also added some additional business data as well. So um, I've got a hotspot um, data layer that I can turn on and off and also created a thematic map showing areas where we've had the most um, amount of um, fly tipping um, incidents. But the, I guess the, the power of Power BI is that there's the capability to sort of drill down and analyze the data. So maybe I'm using these filters on the left hand side of my report. I want to analyze incidents where black uh, bags are being uh, fly tipped. So if I enable that filter, um, we get an update to say, yeah, 311 of our total uh, fly tipping um, incidents where, where uh, black bags were fly tipped, and we can see their locations on the map. Maybe I want to filter further. I want to focus on incidents within uh, the Clifton Ward. So I can apply that filter, and we can see just those 53 incidents of um, black bags 
um, within the sort of Clifton Ward area. And if we you know look at this map, we could probably identify sort of two um, sort of distinct areas um, where black bags are specifically being sort of um, fly tipped uh, within this area. And you just wouldn't kind of you just wouldn't see these types of patterns if you were you know just looking at rows of data in a database or a spreadsheet. So here the map is giving us a, a really sort of useful insight into where we're having problems with um, fly tipping. So yeah, just sort of a quick example there of being able to take a, a map that you've published um, in, in the web map um, and publishing it within Microsoft Power BI for, the, for that sort of BI um, business intelligence uh, purposes. And that sort of brings an end to my demonstration this morning of what a, a GIS implementation can look like in the cloud. So you can benefit from it all being managed from one location with both sort of desktop and, and web mapping applications that can be basically accessed from anywhere. Uh, and you've got that added benefit of the environment and the software uh, being maintained by um, CAD Corp um, on your behalf. So thank you for watching. I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, I'm now going to hand you back to Demelza to conclude the webinar uh, and uh, finish off by answering any questions you may have raised as well. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. I'll just uh, show my screen again. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Simon. And great to see in practice these examples and how they sort of fit together as a single solution. Um, it's important to remember that no two implementations are the same. And at CACOP, we work with each customer and IT colleagues together to provide the best all around solution. OK. So where do you start with cloud migration? Um, if you um, want to work with CAD Corp, um, you're here today, that's a great start. Um, how it's worthwhile just having a chat with your account manager who can arrange um, a migration meeting with a colleague from our technical services team. Um, at this meeting, um, as you'll see on screen, we run through each of these five items to review all of the GIS and web mapping components. And of course, it's a chance for you and your IT to ask any questions um, and find out more, whether it be um, details about um, security, data, software. Um, it's, it's a good opportunity to cover all bases. Um, so some customers who have been through the process um, already, um, in the last uh, six months, we've seen um, moving to cloud services accelerate um, with these four new customers uh, on screen, uh, but also existing customers, three existing customers migrating their on-site implementations to the cloud. Um, so these projects have been keeping us particularly busy recently. Previously, though, they join um, a number of customers who have moved some or all of their services to the cloud, um, reaping the benefits really of um, early adoption. While these are not necessarily all corporate implementations, the benefits of a flexible cloud infrastructure means you can dip your toe into bits that you are, are ready for, as, as some customers have done. So just in terms of um, summing up um, from today, um, cloud IT and GIS can provide for your service needs. IT and GIS and the business should work together to develop um, ob objectives together. And the requirement should keep in mind the goals. So I spoke about um, keeping it um, simple and focused, that, that type of thing. There are many benefits of uh, CACOP cloud services and CACOP can help you with a, a, a migration uh, review meeting. A large number of organizations have successfully embraced the cloud and um, have um, successful uh, implementations today. So perhaps it's time to sort of take stock and mitigate any potential risks that may arise from not adopting um, a cloud-based approach and align your business and IT objectives to provide yourselves with a successful cloud GIS solution. Okay, I said towards the end today, we'd take a look at our questions. So I'll just pop those out on screen. Okay. Right, let's take 
um, a look at. Oh, we've had quite a few questions through, which is great. So a question from um, Darren. Um, assume you're talking about web map. Um, is is this responsive? I if it were review was viewed on a mobile device, how would it look? Um, and also, can you run local knowledge without accessing the map? Yeah, okay. So web map is fully responsive. Um, so you would get um, an appropriate interface if you viewed it on a mobile device. Um, and in terms of local knowledge without accessing via the map, yes, you can enter um, a postcode, select an address, and just return the information from local knowledge. And that's because it is um, a web service. Um, what it might be worth doing is um, setting up a meeting and Simon can perhaps show you um, examples of that working in practice, demonstrate that to you. Um, question from Philip, what is scope for developing our own custom tools? Yeah, so we have um, the CACOP API um, for developing your own tools. And there's also, when you're talking about web map, the Open Layers API available for you to use um, with a, a number of different development languages. Um, we'll send you some more information um, on the ways that you can develop that further, Philip. Okay. Question from Ben. Uh, with desktop in the cloud, do you update to latest monthly builds or just service releases? That is service releases, Ben. That's because um, service releases go through the full testing cycle. Um, so it will be limited to service releases. As soon as they're available, they're available to any um, users of the service. Um, we've got various questions on security. It might be worth taking those offline afterwards. Um, okay, let me... So, Sarah, what cloud platform do you use? And is this UK-based? Um, so, great question. Uh, we use um, a mixture, actually, predominantly Microsoft Azure, but also um, AWS. So we can use the appropriate um, infrastructure, um, and if that's you know dictated by um, your IT department, um, we can um, look at the the options available to us. And yes, um, those are um, currently in the UK. Um, and unless there's a re request for, for other locations. Um, we've got a number of, number of questions that may be worthwhile um, taking offline. Um, so there's a question from Darren again. Um, can embedded maps be displayed in a different language, e.g. Welsh? Um, we do have um, customer, customers who um, have translated the web map interface um, into Welsh, and the translation could include the elements within the embedded map. Um, as well, if that was a requirement, um, uh, we'll get one of our account managers to, to, to contact you with um, details that um, uh, 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 another customer has, has gone through. Okay, we are coming to the end of our um, time today. Um, what we will do, we have a number of questions that it will be worthwhile just contacting you direct and either myself or one of my colleagues will do that um, after the session today. 